Very good morning to everybody. We're out this morning. We're going to hang around the north this morning. We're going to see if we can pick up on Nompetu's cub. We're going to see maybe what the berries have been doing and maybe see what the open and copies are doing. That'll be our plan this morning. Came across this beautiful big bull first thing this morning. You can see he looks still quite sleepy. He's still got some food in his mouth that he hasn't chewed. He's a bit droopy in the eyes. And even look on the side of his body, you can see the sand mark there where he's been resting. Probably on a termite mound. So he's had his few hours sleep last night. Beautiful big bull. Beautiful male Nyala. We saw one the other day, but not quite as close. When you get close to them, you get to see those beautiful white spots and markings on the face. There's two of them, yeah? Beautiful orange socks, we call them on the bottom of the legs there. You can see he's grazing on these nice new shoots. We've still had a lot of late rain. And uh, Nyalas are mixed feeders. They're predominantly browsers, but they will also eat grass, which allows them to sort of venture into different habitats if they need to and mix feed beautiful antelope i'd have to say probably my favorite definitely one of the most beautiful antelope or animals you can see out here A nice big flock of guinea fowls here. Yeah? There's a whole mixture of adults, youngsters. You can see, I'll show you the adults are the birds with the blue heads. If we go further into the group, there, there's a whole lot of them with sort of no coloration, just a grayish black head. That's the youngsters. Helmeted guinea fowl. We do get another version of guinea fowl. Further north in Kruger, that's called a crested guinea fowl. Has what looks like a permed curly hairstyle. These guys just have that helmet, that cask on above their head. Beautiful coloration on their feathers, are white spots on the dark grey background. This checks of one lioness walking up the road, yeah? It must be we're in the Kopi's Pride's territory, so up the road they go. One, and there's also another track on the other side, so potentially two of them. We managed to find one of these copy lionesses. Looks like the oldest female. She's usually quite um, temperamental when you first find her, and you can see how she's lying flat in the grass every now and again. Her tail starts flicking, which uh, is an agitation sign with lions. Things to look for for an upset lion. You look obviously for snarling or baring of their teeth. You will look at the ears. The ears go flat, and then that tail flicking quite uh, violently side to side. I'm sure she'll calm down with us. She just got a bit of a surprise with us coming in here. We did find, or we, like we saw, we saw the tracks of quite a few of them, but it's just this female for now. The sighting is not really improving too much here. She's just lying in this long grass. One thing you can see from here is the amazing camouflage these lions will start to have as we move into the winter and the grass browns. But we're just having a look here. You look at her panting quite a lot. She 
was looking pregnant the last time we saw her. So we just want to see how uh, swollen that belly is. And But she does look uncomfortable, yeah. And as you can see with her stomach, she is, uh, you know, it's moving up and down quite a lot. So it's a good sign that she's in this area alone. She might be looking for a den site. We are very close to a drainage line. So she might put them in there. So guys, to give you a bit more background about the event that happened the other day, the mom leopard and her cub did have an impala kill up in the tree here. Yeah? So we came back to the same tree, the same tree where she was killed next to. Um, there's been an impala head in here for the last couple of days and a bit of neck. And the great news is we found her cub here this morning. So the great news is he looks to be injury free, we haven't seen him properly yet, but nothing could be too damaged else he wouldn't be able to climb this tree and at least there is a bit of meat left on this carcass so he'll be able to get a small meal for now. But just a relief to find him and uh, let's just hope he keeps continuing on well. For obvious reasons he's a lot more alert than when we've seen him before. He used to be quite a carefree leopard, a bit lackadaisical and almost, you know, he was very oblivious to most things that were happening around him, but obviously with the traumatic event that happened to him the other day, he's very alert, keeps looking out from the tree, probably still hoping that he might be able to see mom or hear mom calling, but also just much more aware now of the potential of lions coming in here. So we've, we've come across this scene here and at first it just looks like a normal sighting of a herd of impala but there's something that's actually very rare to see and even though we see thousands of impala every year, I mean the breeding season only happens once a year and for about a month, but we hardly ever see them mating. They do a lot of mating uh, at night apparently. I mean in my career I've only seen it twice and this was the first time that Alistair's seen it. So you'll see this male's courting this female and he He's been mating with her a few times now, following the same female. Doesn't last very long. Look, there we go. 
There you go, that did it. It's incredible. Like I say, I've only seen this three times in about 12 years now. And even before having come to Kruger throughout my life. Very rare to see. Even the wildebeest looks impressed. There we go again. Thank you. 